us now, Elizabeth Arnett, Head of Communications and Corporate Services with Irish Water. Good morning. Good morning. The average bill will be €240 Euros a year, we're told. How do you ensure that that is the case? Well, I suppose the what the government announced yesterday in relation to the, the tariffs for Irish Water is that the €240 Euros is the bill for the average consumer, um, average household, I beg your pardon. Um, and they've also announced that there's subvention of €537 million Euros going into the industry. Um, so the total cost of the industry is is probably about 1.1 billion euros. So that's how right. you determine the just, average just charge. Just that at figure, 537, that's rather larger, I think, than the figure that may have been quoted a few weeks back when the government was talking about 490 million euro. So has there been an increase in that over the past few weeks? Well, I'm not privy to the internal cabinet discussions in relation to what figures were, 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 were considered. I think the announcement yesterday is very clear in terms of the subvention that will be put into the industry and that ensures that we can start and continue to invest in water services and start to tackle the the significant issues that we have in relation to water supply that some parts of the country really do suffer from um, in terms of things like boil water notices in Roscommon. We have a million people with their water supply at risk. We have considerable issues in relation to water wastewater um, standard compliance um, and we don't have enough headroom in terms of water, particularly in the Dublin region. So a lot of investment required. I know people will be keen to hear what you're planning on doing about all of that but just on this question of the average bill 240 euros a year as I said we're told now some people presumably some households will be paying less which means that other households might end up paying what three or four hundred euro at this point, it's very difficult to speculate because, as your previous contributor said, we don't actually know the price per litre. The regulator will determine that. What we do know, though, is, and looking at um, examples from other countries, is that when people start paying for water, they do start changing their behaviour in relation to the amount of water that they use and how that's going to impact on the Irish consumer, we actually don't know yet. So the process that we're in at the moment is that now that government has put out the the allowances, they've put out the, the, the cost for the average house, household and a range of other measures yesterday, the regulator now will consider all of those things and will determine the price per litre. Mm, but it stands to reason, August. though, doesn't it, that if some households are paying less than 240, that other households are going to end up paying substantially more? Well, we know what the average is, but we don't know what the range is. So that's the, that is the thing that we need to determine now over the next couple of months. Irish Water <coughs> wanted a standing charge. You didn't get one. So how big a setback is that for the company? Well, I suppose a standing charge is a normal part of utility billing and we would have it in gas and we would have it in electricity. So we sought a standing charge as part of our submission to the commissioner, to the regulator. Um, What it effectively means is that a standing charge will cover the provision of the service to your home. Most people have waste water out of their home, fresh water in. So the standing charge covers that. What we now have in for Irish Water is that that cost of infrastructure provision is included in the price per litre. For the consumer and for the customer, it means that Every euro that they spend relates to the amount of water that they use. So that puts the customer, the consumer, in charge more in terms of their bill. Um, mm. and, Presumably, and though, you, you wanted this standing charge for a reason. So is this going to make life more difficult for the company? Well, I hope not. Um, I think, as I said, the utility model would be more normal to have a standing charge. We don't have it. That's the government decision. And we operationalise that. We're talking, or we have been talking, about the amounts Irish Water will receive by way of government subvention, or I suppose I should say a subvention from all of us, because it's taxpayers' money that will be going to the company. We also learnt earlier in the year that 29 staff at Irish Water will be earning more than €100,000 a year. So is the public getting value for money here? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think the, the role of the regulator is very important in relation to this. And the regulator will review all of the costs at Irish Water to ensure that every single euro that we spent is spent is spent in an efficient way and delivers value for the customer. Um, the process that is in, in terms of reviewing those costs is, undergo- is, in, is being undertaken at the moment and we're very confident that we'll come out the other side of that um, with the regulator approving all of the costs that we have for Irish Water. What will you be spending on fixing leaks and improving the water supply? Well, uh, in the next week or two we will be, we will be announcing the capital investment plan. Um, what we need is substantially more than what we will have and I think that's, that 
is that is the reality. I think over the next 10 years, we could probably spend in the region of 8 to 10 billion euros. We haven't been investing enough in water services, particularly in the last few years, and we have a lot of legacy issues. We have a, a, estimated that probably around 600 million is what's required per annum to start addressing the significant Will issues you have that, that we have. We won't have that. Um, and and but we, we hope that when we get established fully as a regulated utility model, we will be able to attract inward investment from capital markets to support the water industry here in Ireland and ensure that we have the level of investment required to address the issues that we have. The regime we're talking about this morning, it's in place for the next couple of years. We don't know what will be happening after that. So can you understand if people are concerned that, you know, whatever rate the water charges start off at, that that's likely to be hiked and hiked again as as the years go by? Well, I think, yes, of course, I can understand the concerns that people would have. We're we're going to enter into a price control um, period up to the end of 2016. What happens beyond that, though, is very difficult to say. The utility model um, demonstrates, and we've seen it with Board Gosh and we've seen it with, um, with ESB, that we're very good in Ireland at running utilities and attracting investment from the market. And when you can do that, then you lift the burden off the consumer and you lift the burden off the exchequer. And that is why the government has moved to in, the, in the direction of a, of a regulated utility. People will have seen attempts to stop the installation of metres in Cork and in Dublin as well. How many metres have now been installed? We have well over 200,000 metres installed to date and we are very pleased with the progress that we've made. Our metering programme is the most ambitious metering programme ever attempted by a utility and it is going extremely well. Now, from time to time, we do have to um, temporarily stop works for health and safety reasons to ensure that nobody gets hurt on the street. Um, we Look, people have a right to, to demonstrate and have a right to express their opinions and we would fully respect that. But the metering programme is, is, is a very ambitious one and it's going extremely well. And in fact, Government has put additional um, additional targets on top of the metering program to include apartments now, um, and we've brought forward the deadline for the million meters being installed to the middle of 2016, and we so will meet those targets. How many households will be without meters when these charges are introduced? Well, I think the, the reality is that there will always be households that don't have meters, and so in that context, we have what's called an assessed tariff. Now, the advantage we have in Ireland is that because we have so many meters, we have very good information with regard to how much water people are using and we will use that information to determine the most accurate assessed tariff that we can have. You know though that this is going to be controversial. People will be coming to you saying, listen, you're saying I I used this amount of water just because my neighbours did and I can assure you that I didn't. Well, there's an additional measure that was announced yesterday by the government whereby if you've been on an assessed tariff, you move to a metered tariff and there is a differential in terms of your bill that we would look to reconcile that differential. We're confident that because of the way we will structure the assessed tariff, that the consumer should uh, don't w- won't have to be concerned in relation. And just to back that. to that original question: How many households will be without meters when these charges are introduced? So we will have the commence billing commences in October twenty, uh, the October of this year, and mm-hmm. um, the the, ch- the charges are, are uh, start at that point, and we will have um, in the region of um, of oh, the figure escapes me. Um, we will have well over three hundred and fifty thousand meters in at that point. So the majority of households. Will won't have um, uh, won't have a meter at that point. However, by the middle of 2016, um, and we're still in this price control period, we will have well over a million households. Okay, with so, so again, that's just, just to be clear about this. By the time these charges are introduced, the majority of households won't have meters. The majority of households will be on an assessed tariff and we will be ensuring that that tariff is as close to the metered tariff as we possibly can do because we will be able to use the data that we have from households that that are on a metered meter at the moment. Just finally on all of this, the Minister Phil Hogan was talking yesterday about what will happen to those households where the charge isn't paid. Can you outline that for us? What will happen? Well, I think at this point, until the regulator has fully made their determinations, it's it's speculation as to what will happen in relation to that. But he spoke about the water being turned off or turned down so that just a trickle comes into a household. Yes, in the legislation there is provision in order to ensure that a house, the household has a water, continues to have a water supply, but in the context of not paying a bill, that that water supply is greatly reduced. And is this something that you're physically capable of doing? Yes, All right. Well, listen, thank you very much for joining us this morning. That was Elizabeth Arnett. She's the spokesperson for Irish Water.